Hello, Rebels of the Sharp Illusion. Normally, I start off this podcast by saying hi, but I'm going to start this one off by saying hydration. We know how important hydration is for our bodies. It's the thing that keeps us running, right? You want to be a well-oiled machine. You want to be running efficiently. You know what can help you run efficiently? Liquid IV. It is the category-winning hydration brand fueling your well-being, and their hydration multiplier is the one product that you are missing in your daily routine. It comes in a little stick that's a powder, and in just one stick, you get five essential vitamins and two times faster hydration than water alone. If you use it first thing in the morning, maybe before a workout, when you feel run down, maybe after a long night out and doing a little party, you know what I mean? And even, what if you have like a long flight or something like that and you just, bleh, right? We all feel that way. Bleh. So add this to your water and that convenient packaging can go with you anywhere you go, even if you're going to the gym or you're traveling or you're at work and maybe you didn't have a great breakfast. Breakfast, at least it's something that will fuel you up in the morning. And there's a whole bunch of flavors that are available, like sea berry, strawberry lemonade, concord grape, lemon lime, pina colada, tropical punch, watermelon, strawberry, passion fruit, guava, acai berry. Did I say that right? I never know how to say that. But those are just some of the flavors. Here's some statistics for you folks. One stick of liquid IV in 16 ounces of water contains five essential vitamins, B3, B5, B6, B12, and even vitamin C. And we all know how important those B vitamins are. It's got three times the electrolytes of traditional sports drinks. It's made with premium ingredients. It's non-GMO and it is free from gluten, dairy, and soy. I'm going to offer you a great deal, Rebels. If you go to liquidiv.com and use offer code SHERPA, you can get 20% off of anything that you order on that site when you're shopping for some better hydration. So that's Liquid IV. Check it out at liquidiv.com. podcast that you're listening to is being presented to you in cooperation with the SJ Network. If you're a person who'd like to appear on a podcast, contact Stephen Joyner at s-j-network.com. Let's get on with the show. Today on the Sherpa Screening Room, it's an interview with songwriter and musician Lisa Marie Barnes. You'll also get to hear her music in this episode. Speaking of music, how many folk singers does it take to change a light bulb? Six. One to change it, and five to sing about how good the old one was. Coming to you from Sherpa Chalet in beautiful downtown Mount Podcastia, it's time for entertainment interviews in the Sherpa Screening Room. Grab an aisle seat and a bucket of popcorn, but don't crunch too loud or you'll miss the show. Now, he's your host, Jim, the podcast Sherpa. Hello there, Rebels of the Sherpa Lucian, and welcome to the Sherpa Screening Room. It is a presentation of Too Many Podcasts, so that must mean that the person you are listening to is me, Jim the Podcast Sherpa. Hey, yes, it is. Look at that. I was right this time. Wow. And if you've never heard these episodes before, it's when I get the opportunity to speak to people who are creators, you know, if they're actors directors, authors, and if you're listening to today's show, a musician, and her name is Lisa Marie Barnes. She's got some music out there. She's making a splash out on the music scene, living down in Florida, a former New Yorker. The girl likes to rock, plain and simple. <laughs> so we spent a little time getting to know her. We talked about her music, her influences, and how AI could be a help or a hindrance in the music world. I guess you'll have to make up your mind, but first, let's have a listen to my chat with Lisa Marie Barnes. Hello there, Rebels. We are here in the Sherpa Screening Room. My guest today is coming to us from the very frigid state of Florida, <laughs> where it's been an average of 115 degrees, small animals are exploding on the sidewalk, and eggs are being fried. <laughs> she is a singer, songwriter, rock and roll musician. Her name is Lisa Marie, and she's right here. Lisa Marie, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me on the show. Is it more of a stigma now uh, with women in rock, or is it still, like, you still feel that you have to prove yourself? Oh, it's still, you still have to prove yourself. Um, yeah. It still, it hasn't changed. You would think by now it changed. I mean, there's a lot more women musicians, right? which is great. You know, there's some phenomenal guitar players coming out 
that are women. Um, but it, it's still, it's still really small because I wanted to put together an all female band and to find female musicians is really difficult. Really? To put something together. Yeah. It, it, it's like there's a plethora of men I could find to put together a mixed band. But if I wanted to do like an all female thing, it, there's just not enough female musicians. We need more. Come on, women. <laughs> you you got to get the recruiting going here, Lisa Marie. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Learn an instrument. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of learning instruments, how, how old were you when you started playing the guitar? Um, well, I started really, I, I started when I was about, I don't know, I want to say um, 15. I used to steal my sister's boyfriend guitar when when they would leave the house and puck around with it. And I would try to play uh, Neil Young and I'd sit there trying to make a D chord for, for like hours on end. And I'd make a dent in the guitar and in the neck, in the, in the neck. I, I still have the same guitar and it has the same dent from trying so hard. <laughs> but I started then and then I stopped for a long time. And, and then years later, I started up again. I think I was like 17. And then I went to music college when I was 17, uh, Five Towns College on Long Island, mm-hmm. uh, Long Island. Long Is, Island. Are you familiar with it? <laughs> we always say in Long Island, your exit, exit 30, right? <laughs> but but uh, I went to Five Towns College and um, I went for a couple of years and then I left. And then I wound up playing in a band. I wound up playing bass and then I played in a band for many years. And um, I used to play at a place called, I don't know if they are they still there. It's called my father's place. They closed and they reopened, believe it or not, in, in like a hotel. They, they, oh, really? Yeah. I played at a little place across the street called Ferns. It was a little jazz place. It was right across the street from my father's place. It's probably not there anymore. But um, I, I played in upright bass. I played in a little jazz trio there. And um, and then I started, I played in a rock band. And I played for many years in a rock band at, as a bass player. And um, I just decided to switch over back over to guitar not that long ago. So, so you play uh, regular guitar, you play bass, and is there anything else that you play? Because you said that you play yeah. instruments yeah. On, on your recordings. Yes, on the recordings, I'm playing all the instruments except for the drums. Mm-hmm. And um, I play uh, the piano, the keyboard. I play the harp. It's not on this recording. I did a recording playing. It's a le- le- lever harp. It's 38 strings. Okay. So I play I play that, but I, I did like a, a, a recording. Uh, a few recordings with the harp, but nothing that I released on on streaming yet with that. That's a whole nother thing. <laughs> that would be an interesting market, though, a rock guitarist who plays the harp. Yeah, I know. It's two different worlds, right? <laughs> although although you can play metallic and stuff like that on the harp, you know, <laughs> other than Christmas. You always think of the harp and you think of, of oh, Christmas tunes or wedding tunes, right? <laughs> but uh, there's so many different things you can play on the harp. And there's an idea for you though. You, you you pick like the hardest rock songs and play them all on harp. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I I think it's been done. Like um, I saw a few people doing uh, Led Zeppelin and Metallica on a uh, on. If you look on YouTube, there's some really great pe- uh, players out there that did that. It's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I play the tenor sax too. I just haven't done any recordings with it, and I'm hoping that my neck one of my next recordings I'll be able to play the saxophone on the recording wow you really definitely like to uh <laughs> mix up your sound yeah that's for sure. yeah well it's like i want to learn a new instrument every five years you know so i make mm-hmm. it a point to you know keep evolving because to me all the instruments are a tool um for songwriting because i i'm mainly i think a songwriter so and all the instruments are just a tool mm-hmm. so i use all the instruments to put my ideas together and create something what what music did you originally grow up liking well it's funny because i started out liking um very early on i was really into soul uh our uh, rhythm and blues and r&b i was huge i was a huge fan of um diana ross and uh you know anything um funk any kind of funk music i used to love Mm-hmm. And then I was into Three Dog Night, and then I got into uh, Led Zeppelin and Jimi Hendrix and Pink Floyd, Queen. I was a big fan of Queen, still am. 
your your tastes run all over the map. Yeah, it's pretty much all over the map. And then I got into uh, took a huge interest in, in uh, classical guitar, so I started playing like Leona Boyd. Um, she's an amazing uh, cla- uh, classical guitar player, and so I, I I like everything Bach. I like anything from Bach to heavy metal, blues, you name it. <laughs> Yeah, I know uh, one of the songs that you actually did vocals on is more like a, a blues record. Yes, the Elusive Magic that I just um, released a single, and that is more leans more towards the blues, mm-hmm. um, you know, blues guitar playing. So most of the things that I write are found either blues or country or um, or rock, you know. Yeah, there's, there's definitely a tie-in between the genres. You know, it's people always think that they're very separate, but I, you know, even like a lot of the well-known musicians, you know, you'll see rock artists who love the blues and even the country artists that tie into that. And, you know, it, it's an effortless transition for them to play different types of music like that. Yeah, it, it definitely, it depends on what you're doing. But yeah, I agree. What uh, inspired you to finally start recording your music? Um, well, I go to, I'm going to Berkeley. I started going to Berkeley School for Music um, about two years ago. Mm-hmm. And the goal was to, um, get more familiar with recording on my own using the DAW and um, getting all into recording and songwriting and pretty much uh, Final Cut Pro video editing. I wanted to do everything myself. So I figured, you know, why don't I learn everything? So, um, so I went, so I've been going there for a while now and uh, um, I'm on break right now, but I'm looking forward to going back in September and, uh, you know, just getting getting better and, you know, like sure. learning as much as I can. Yeah, you, you've definitely got a hands-on approach. I mean, you you play all these different instruments. You're learning how to mix everything and even uh, working with uh, the videos for the songs as well. Yeah, yes. The video, um, I, I did a video from my last song um, and it was, uh, it was um, a really personal song and I had Joey Greco sing on it and I just love the song. And it's just, it, it's about my ex who, um, he hung himself many years ago. Mm-hmm. And the song was really personal. It was about, it was about that. And, and so, um, I put the, together the video to depict everything that happened, you know, right. with, you know, like how that worked out. So if you want to look up the video, you can look on YouTube, um, under at least Marie Barnes, you can go on YouTube and, I'm sure it'll come up. What are you using to like pr- promote a lot of your music? I know you you said a lot of it's on Spotify and Apple Music as well. It, it, yeah, it's on all the streaming services right now. Um, I signed up with ASCAP, and then I I um I took a publishing course at Berkeley, and I signed up with ASCAP, and then they uh, DistroKid and DistroKid sends it out to all the streaming. So I'm pretty much on Apple Music, um, Deezer. Uh, iTunes, pretty, they, they just send it out to all the streaming, so I'm pretty much out there. What was the first song that you ever wrote? Oh, gosh. Um, well, the first song that I actually wrote that I loved, I play, I wrote it on the bass, and it's called Cold Hearted Gypsy. And um, it's on YouTube, but the recording was kind of not that good. Mm-hmm. But it's a really, a really good song. It has odd timing, and it's just cute. But I had a... It, um, a male was singing it, but it was real. And so everybody thought it was about a, a gypsy, a cold hearted gypsy, like a cold hearted woman, but it was really about my cat. <laughs> the truth is revealed. I know. Was, yeah. My, my cat was just like, had an attitude and she just didn't like me. And she was, and I would call her cold hearted gypsy. And that was her name. Her name was gypsy. And I wrote it about that. But when the guy sang it, it, Everybody thought it was about the about a woman being a gypsy. Is it weird when, like, I mean, you're you're writing as a woman to have like a a guy singing your vocals? Yes, that's why I started singing because I'm not really a singer, but I was trying. Uh, it's hard to get the songs across when it, somebody else is singing it because it's really everybody thinks it's coming from it's their song, you know. Right. So it's 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 probably better that I sing my own songs. Okay. Or either that or get a woman to sing it, which I have <laughs> I have a hard time finding other other musicians to work with that are, you know, like women. <laughs> you know, I can get men to, to to record. No problem. I I know some really amazing 
male musicians and singers, but I don't know enough women singers. And I would really need somebody to else to collaborate with. That would be great. Sure. I, I mean, because I would figure that some of the songs that you've written probably definitely have a, a strong female perspective and you exactly. want to get that across. Right, right. And it's kind of difficult when I have a guy singing it. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it, it is what it is, you know, like I have so many, so many songs that I've been writing lately and I just have to put the brakes on because I need to finish the group, the three songs that I, I'm like ready to put out release and I need to finish that first but now I just keep wanting the right new stuff and I have to put the brakes on and take it you know take a step back so I can finish everything you know it's a very lonely world when you're doing everything yourself well maybe if you get a partner or whatever who plays some instruments as well you could kind of split the uh the chores right exactly what genre do you feel that you would fit into like with with the music that you've been writing you think it's more towards a rock like a rock blues Rock blues. Yeah, I would say soulful rock blues. That's kind of what everything has been falling into, that kind of genre, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, the good thing about releasing singles is you can release, um, it could sound like anything. Like I can release one song that sounds like blues, another song that sounds like heavy metal. Like it doesn't really, you could do whatever you want, basically, you know. Right. And I guess like with the way with releasing music now is so, so much different from the uh, recording contract deal where, you know, you're expected to do yes. this kind of album. And now it's a, yes. you, you, it's, you set the pace. Yes. It's so it's, there's good things about it and there there's positives and negatives about it. You know, um, back in the day, uh, years ago, I was signed to EMI with a band that I was in and, um, and we were all excited. We were like, this is it. We're rock stars. And, <laughs> and um, the singer passed away, unfortunately, right like right after we got signed to the label. And um, so we had to hold auditions to find a replacement. And that took forever. And then once we finally found somebody, he wasn't as good as the original singer. And they kind of just shelved us and nothing happened. Nothing came of it after that. Mm-hmm. So... <laughs> You know, then we I had to evolve into something else. And then the whole industry started changing. And now the good thing about now is we can, you can have do your own recordings. You can do so much yourself. Um, you can self-publish. You don't have to rely on um, on anybody. There's a, a an AI that I was looking into uh, recently for recording. It's crazy what you can do with AI. There's a, there's a website called Fadder, F A D R. Okay. And what people are doing, have you heard of it? No, no, I haven't. Oh, yeah. People can go on to this website and they can actually take the vocals out of a song and have AI um, replace the vocals with an AI vocal, which is crazy. It's, it sounds pretty, pretty good, but it, it's just weird. The good thing about it, though, is you can, you can, um, Make stems. You can pull stems apart. So you know what stems are. That's like with, with the guitar and the bass and the drums and all that. So when you have stems are when you have multiple instruments. Uh, you're recording, right? So you, each each stem is a different instrument. So you have guitar, you have bass, you have the drums, and they're all recorded on a separate track or a separate stem. And then you can. That's how you can collaborate with other musicians. You send them the stem. So if if I want somebody, a drummer to play on my track, I can send them the stems and they, they can throw the drums down and send me the stem of the drum back, you know, or if they, if it, if they send it back to me and they mixed it themselves and they send me an MP3 back, well, I need, I want, if I want to get the stems, I can't because he just sent me the final, like it's all mixed. So it's a little frustrating. So <laughs> what this F batter can do is, um, it can break up the stem. So you can put an MP3 or a wave into fatter and it breaks it up and gives you the stems for each instrument. So, which is, I think is phenomenal. That's great. You know, so you don't have to wait on anybody to send you stems. You can just, uh, you know, break it up yourself and then record however you want. So yeah, it's, it's pretty fascinating. It's scary and fascinating at the same time. Does it, does a person have to be a musician to understand how to like stick in the musical parts or is that kind of built into the program also? Um, 
That's a good question. I mean, you would have to have some knowledge, you know, you have to, you have to know how to record. You got to know about, you know, um, what a door is. You got to know certain things. Um, that's a good question though. I, I think, I think you, you can, it's pretty intuitive. Like you can go on there and you can, that's the scary part. You don't have to come to think of it. You probably don't have to be, be a musician. You could probably just go on there and figure it out and take stuff from everywhere else and mash it together. I haven't gotten that far into it to, to realize what else it can do. I was just fascinated that, about the fact that you can, um, you know, separate songs and add vocals and do different things. The only thing it doesn't do is, which I wish it would do, is if I write a guitar piece and I throw it in, I would wish that it would come up with like a, a drum a drum part right away, you know, full drum part to go with it. That would be perfect. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's probably a website that does that. I was just thinking, I, there's a user, I don't know if they're on uh, TikTok or YouTube, but one of the video things, and they take the tracks from popular songs and they put like different singer doing it. They had like um, like Elvis Presley singing Baby Got Back, <laughs> Johnny yeah, Cash yeah, singing that's, Barbie that's, Girl. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I know. I heard one, uh, an Elvis tune. It was pretty funny. They changed the words around. It was his voice. That's pretty creepy. <laughs> but yeah, people are doing it left and right. It's nuts. They, they had one they called Frank Slipnotra. <laughs> I didn't see that one, but that's that's crazy. I'll have to check that one out. <laughs> yeah, I got you know, it's interesting, you know, that they can do this stuff. I know they were saying uh that uh, the surviving Beatles were supposed to do something new with a new song with uh I guess with restoring John Lennon's vocals in into it. Yeah, I heard that something was going on with that. I don't really know much about it to comment on it really, but it's, yeah, a lot can be done with AI. It's it's so scary. Even with, uh, are you familiar with ChatGPT? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and all that. Um, well, those are like great as a tool, but it's but it's a liar. Like they, the ChatGPT has this confident lie that it does. Like you can ask it a question, and it'll give you a fact, and then it'll the fact it'll act like the it's a fact, and it's wrong. Mm-hmm. And then it'll insist it's right. It'll be like, no, you know, very, very stubborn. <laughs> so you got to be really careful with it because it'll lie. To, it'll tell you it's the truth and it's a lie. So, um, so it's not accurate. Even with the fatter, the fatter will give you beats per minute, BPM, mm-hmm. and it's not accurate. So AI is great, but you can't rely on it because a lot of it is not accurate. It's not so accurate. So you have to use like half and half. You got to use like, your brain, you know, your own knowledge and and use it as a tool, like I said before, because you can, if you're too confident with it and you rely on it, it could really embarrass you, <laughs> you know, like. Yeah, it, you know, it reminds me, uh, last season I spoke to uh, a movie writer named uh, Bennett Yellen and Bennett wrote uh, Dumb and Dumber. And, oh, okay, yeah. And they were talking about, you know, the writer's strike. And he said, like, if somebody uses AI to write like a movie script, he said, you can tell the difference, you know, that you, yeah. you know, because real writers know how actual people communicate where, where, you know, that, yeah. those scripts are just kind of very, you know, broken, broken down the wrong way. Yeah. If you, if you use chat GBT enough, you can, you, after a while, you get to see all the, all the flaws mm-hmm. and you start seeing how, uh, how fake it is. Like you, you start to have an, an eye for it and you, you can tell that it's not, a human writing it, you know. That's why it's it's great as a tool. But a lot of these companies, they're thinking that they oh they they don't need writers anymore. They don't need content writers, you know. Even songwriters, they're they're using it, but you can't because if you if you if you go and try it and you try to write something, have it write something for you, you know. After a while, you're going to see that it repeats the same thing, right? And either that or the, or or it doesn't really make sense. Yeah, I, I can picture them doing doing that in the music business, though, you know, it, especially if they promote it the right way. You know, like they used to use like auto-tune for people that really couldn't sing that well. And yeah, yeah. they use auto right for the for the vocal. Everybody uses auto-tune for the vocals. Yeah. And yeah, so now it's like the uh, the thing like a normal thing to do, you know. Um and AI is becoming the norm. So people expect, you know, like 
And a lot of people are losing their jobs. A lot of writers are losing their jobs Mm -hmm. because of um, AI. It's scary until they realize, until they realize all all the mistakes. And, you know, after a while. That that was their other concern that they're going to write these scripts with AI and then they're going to call in the actual writers to fix it and then pay them less. Yeah. All that. Yeah. So they'll still use the writers, but yeah, they'll, they'll use, they'll need them less uh, only to oversee. Mm-hmm. Like to oversee the writing. So yeah, and, and just edit it, but that mm-hmm. takes away their job. That now they're they have half the job, right? Because sure. now they're just monitoring it, really, which is you know you know, it's the same thing in av- when advertising um years ago, I remember advertising, um, when people had to convert over the over to the computer in the advertising world, it like a lot, a lot of people got lost in the dust because they didn't um they were doing the, they were in advertising for so many years that it was hard for them to convert over to the computer. Yeah. And using design material. So, um, software rather. And so that was a whole learning curve. But so, and that evolved into something else. So now it's kind of this, we're in the same kind of thing where everything is going to evolve because of the AI, right? So, sure. um, it might create more jobs because now you're going to need people to program the AI engines, right? And now on top of that, you have a lot of companies starting to, not starting to, they've been creating these all the kinds of apps that have AI generators for all different things from like images and um, just everything, everything imaginable using. So there's a lot of programs and apps popping up all over, you know? Absolutely. So it, it's interesting. So talking about real people for a second, is there an artist that you would love to work with? Oh, God. Um, yes. There's so many. <laughs> you know, there's, it's funny because um, there's the, a woman that's been on my on my um, social media for a long time. And um, she's just like the equivalent of Marilyn Monroe mm-hmm. and um, Mammy Van uh, Duren. Okay. Maybe Van, yeah. Van Duren. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So she's been on like i used to i love old movies so she's been on in my friends for a long time so i actually emailed her and i asked her if she would sing on one of my tracks <laughs> i don't expect her to say yes but it, she's like 92 wouldn't it be cool though if she did that would be like <laughs> really unique i think it can't can't hurt, can't hurt to ask her right <laughs> but um there's so many people i would love to i would love to work with though you know as far as musicians but um whether that'll happen or not, you know, who knows? Yeah. And who's on your like your your dream list? Like if you like you have a top three? Yeah, but they're all dead. Oh. <laughs> AI, bring them back. <laughs> yeah, right? Oh god, that's funny. AI, bring them back. That's a good one. <laughs> Imagine. Jeez. <laughs> all right. So if, if people want to hear your music, where where do they gotta go, Lisa Murray? Um, all you have to do is ask um Alexa. Play Lisa Marie Barnes, Elusive Magic. Elusive Magic by Lisa Marie Barnes in Spotify. Did you hear her? Uh-huh. There you go. Or you can ask you can ask Siri, or you can um, uh, look on YouTube, Lisa Marie Barnes, um, Spotify, Apple, Lisa Marie Barnes, Elusive Magic. I'm all over the map. <laughs> I'm easy to find. Or just friend me on Facebook. It's um, my Facebook is. Lisa L I S A Triple A Marie Barnes. It's pretty easy. I couldn't get my my whole name. Somebody else used it. So there's so many people with my name. So it's L I S A A A Marie Barnes. There you have it. All right, Lisa yeah. Marie. Thank you so much for spending a little time with us. All right, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Be a rebel. Follow the show at Sheer Pollution on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. A very special thanks to Lisa Marie Barnes for coming on the show, and a special thanks to you as well for hanging around and listening. And now that you've hung around long enough, guess what? We've got some of our music right here, right now, on this very episode. That's right, I got permission from Lisa to play some of her stuff. So we are going to hear two songs, and we will be out of here. You're going to hear Elusive Magic, and you didn't hear me. And if you want to hear more of this, you know what to do. You can find too many podcasts on podcast apps everywhere, 
or on SharpAllusion.com, or even on our YouTube channel, which is at SharpAllusion5000. I don't know why I picked that. It just sounds like a cleaner or something like that. If you enjoy the show, if you could please leave a nice review on Apple Podcasts and let me know, and you could be entered in the contest to win podcast merchandise from the T-Sharper Shop. Yay! Free podcast merchandise. Could be yours. All you got to do is say something nice. You can do that. I know you can. And I guess that will do it for me, folks. So let's listen to some music. And me and Lord Mr. Bruce will be throwing on some headphones and checking it out. And until then, we'll be seeing you next time. Viva la Sherpolution.
Thanks for listening to the Sherpa Screening Room. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, review, and share this podcast. I'm Mr. Bruce, and this has been a Sherpa Lou Studios production. Viva la Sherpa Lution! You know, Rebels, if you've been checking out some of my promotional ads on social media, you'll be aware that I have been using a lot of AI programs to help me create ads. But you know what? There's a lot more uses for AI than just funny little videos. And I'd like to introduce one of our new sponsors, Podium. It is a leader in creating AI tools for podcasters. Now, let's say you've got a podcast or maybe you're even thinking of doing a podcast. You're probably wondering, well, how can AI be integrated with your workflow? I'll tell you about Podium. As a podcaster, you know that writing show notes and creating chapters and transcribing episodes takes a lot of time and it can cost you a lot of money too. But you know what? That's where Podium comes in. It's an AI tool designed specifically for creators and podcasters with the goal of making post-production tasks quick and easy. And in just a few minutes, Podium generates show notes, chapters, summaries, clips for social media, a full transcript, suggested episode titles, social media posts, and more. Whew, that's a lot of work for one little program. You your show notes are key to your podcast success because it helps new listeners find your podcast and they'll know if it's a fit for them. You know, it's kind of like too many podcasts. It also improves your SEO. That's your search engine optimization. Ooh, big phrase there. And overall accessibility. And with Podium, you can focus on creating a great podcast and let Podium's AI do the heavy lifting. But Podium isn't just for solo creators and podcasters. It's a game changer for editors, producers, marketers, agencies, and production studios. Teams that use Podiums are able to increase workloads, decrease turnaround times, and improve their quality. How does it work? Very easy. First, go to Podium's website, and you'll see that link that's right there in the show notes. You get three hours free just to try it. Pretty cool, huh? And using that link also supports this show as well. And you know what else happens? Because I'm a good guy. You use my link, you will get 50% off for your first month. So visit the site, upload an MP3 file, and download your files, and that's it. And if you need anything else, you can use Podium GPT to generate articles and any marketing copy you might need in seconds instant show notes transcripts chapters for your podcast or channel this will level up that podcast so check out podium today